This is a perfect barometer check game for the Arizona Cardinals in so many ways. Why? Let's discuss. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Alex Clancy here. Follow me on Twitter, Clancy's Corner underscore. Follow the podcast at Locked On AZ Cards. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen. Free wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day going into my eighth season as host of this lovely podcast. Been in sports radio since 2011. Thank you for being a part of this journey with me. Today's episode of Lockdown Cardinals is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash lockdown NFL and use code all lowercase lockdown NFL to win 50 bucks instantly when you play five dollars. What's the path to victory for the Arizona Cardinals? What does play the hits mean? I'll discuss in the second segment, but first. After, um, you know, the last two days of shows, had Trevor Sikama on on Wednesday. It was great. Uh, lead draft analyst over there at Pro Football Focus. Uh, did my crossover with Matt Deary from Locked on Lions yesterday. A lot of information about the Lions, et cetera. Um, first off, after that, I have to mention, uh, Kyler Murray was voted FedEx Air NFL Player of the Week for Week 2. Um, rightfully so. Alvin Kamara won Offensive Player of the Week. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Bigger goals, bigger things, doesn't really matter. Uh, Evan Kamara had four touchdowns. So I get it, uh, I guess. Um, doesn't really matter. But going into Sunday at home, the afternoon slate, State Farm Stadium, the barometer check is as such that everything that we know about this team up until this point will be put to the test. Now, not to the test of, oh, chances are they're going to lose, so everything that we've seen up until this point isn't what it looks like, or if they win, oh, they're going to win the Super Bowl. It's just, it's not that drastic, but little things will be put to the test. And a couple of the most important ones, number one, Kyler Murray's ability to supersede a pass rush, namely one anchored by Aiden Hutchinson, who has Defensive Player of the Year written all over him. Five sacks last week against Baker Mayfield in a losing effort. That's number one. Can Kyler Murray put together a game that is kind of the child of week one and week two? Kind of putting that two together, meeting in the middle. First one, more level-headed, a lot less running around. Um, And then, you know, week two was just mad and uneasy for him. We saw what he could be at his absolute greatest. Somewhere in the middle, because as I say a lot every day, as you'll know this, if this is your first listen to Lockdown Cardinals, thank you. You'll hear me say this a lot. The best defense the Cardinals have is their run game. The best defense the Cardinals have are is long, sustained drives to keep Jared Goff, Amon Ross St. Brown, David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs at all on the sideline, needing to warm up because they haven't been on the field for six or seven minutes of game time. So that's number one. The barometer check is, can Kyler Murray circumvent a pass rush that may and probably will at times overpower the Arizona Cardinals offensive line? It's going to be Aiden Hutchinson versus Kellen Beach. You heard Matt Dury from, from Locked on Lions say it yesterday. So that pivots into my second barometer check. What is this offensive line? Who are they? We've seen peaks. We've seen many valleys, but the majority has been Average to above average. A B-minus offensive line is still the best offensive line the Cardinals have had since Kyler Murray's been drafted. Paris Johnson Jr. got beat badly by Jared Verse on Kyler Murray's dipsy-doodle touchdown throw to the back of the end zone. But overall, he played well. Evan Brown played well against the Rams. Kelvin Beecham played very well on the right side of the line, and Yalta Frolt and Will Hernandez are just consistent at the right guard and center position, respectively. But the second barometer check is what is this offensive line? Because this front of the Detroit Lions is by far the best one the Cardinals have played so far, eking out over Buffalo. So what does it mean at home to be able to give Kyler Murray enough time to survey, whether it be RPO, going through his progressions, whatever it is, 
How will the offensive line hold up? I prognosticate that they're going to be doing a little bit more out of shotgun. That gives Kyler Murray an extra half second or full second where he doesn't have to do a five or seven foot drop with Aiden Hutchinson breathing down his neck. It just, it, it depends on game flow also naturally. So that's another barometer check. And then, you know, the easy one is can, and I'm going to group these two guys together because these are the most important pass catchers that the Cardinals have naturally. And Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr., Trey McBride, they're one and one. It's not one A and one B. I said that before the season started all the way. You know, since they drafted Marvin Harrison Jr., he's going to come in being the third option behind James Conner and Trey McBride, and he could very well overtake the others. And we saw in week two that what he can do when given the opportunity and when, you know, he and Kyler Murray are on the same page. But at this point, I'll give Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr. one and one not one ahead of the other. What this offense will look like as it evolves, when you get more reps, there's more in-game rapport, and then opposing defenses are going to have to choose what they're going to be focusing on. Bracketing Marvin Harrison Jr. and letting Trey McBride have a little bit more leeway, vice versa, or splitting the two and just going ones or playing zone and, and hoping that Kyler Murray doesn't thread the needle like he did multiple times against the Rams. I want to see what Trey McBride and Marvin Harrison Jr. can do when it's more even. Trey McBride had a great catch last week, hit chunk yards. He looked good. He's looked good given the opportunity. He hasn't had as many opportunities that we would have expected through two weeks. But I'm curious to see the evolution of the one and one pass catchers for the Arizona Cardinals when you have the best defense they've played up until this point especially as I snort, especially when there's such uh it's not pressure. It's week three. With such an opportunity to get exponentially further ahead of the curve than anyone really expected them to be through three weeks at two and one. With Washington coming into town next week. It changes everything if the Cardinals win on, uh, on Sunday. It changes everything. And the final barometer check for me, and I think this is pretty obvious on the defensive side of the ball, where can you trust defensive players? Five sacks last week. That was against a, a, an eviscerated offensive line. This is arguably the best offensive line in football, anchored by, by Penny Sewell. Can the pass rush get to, J, get to Jared Goff? Because just like Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff isn't a move, isn't a mobile quarterback naturally. So if they can get to him and get in his kitchen, you saw last week, if you didn't watch the game, last week he threw a couple really bad interceptions. He has the proclivity to throw bad interceptions when he's being pressured. So if you can see 70% of the pass rush from last week with the pressure, sacks, and everything in between against this uh, Detroit Lions offensive line, that would be more impressive than what the Cardinals did last week. So the barometer checks for these things are while, even if the Cardinals do lose on Sunday and it's competitive, it's still like, okay, they lost to a better team. But if they can leverage what they've got and maximize that talent and maximize that leverage and get a dub on Sunday, the landscape for the 2024 season changes not drastically but it definitely changes the cardinals need to play the hits on sunday what do i mean oh you better believe i'll tell you next this episode of locked on cardinals is brought to you by our favorite friends at fandom america's number one sportsbook why wouldn't we talk about it man you've heard us talk a lot about fanduel and uh we've got something different for you you can't, you know, not only bet the over-under, which is around 51 points right now. On top of that, now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday tickets from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. That is massive. There's more games in the afternoon. There are always, you know, there's marquee matchups then. Um, all you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com. And listen, if you want to start putting some cheese on 
Cardinals making the playoffs futures, Cardinals win total futures, NFC West winning futures. You can do that all at FanDuel.com. Download America's number one sportsbook. It's going to be a fascinating game on Sunday. It's going to be fascinating. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, man. Uh, turn notifications on. Leave a comment. Happy that you're here. If you'd like to go leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast on Apple, would love that too. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy that you're here. And that's that's the most important thing. Um, only, only exciting things are coming. It's not going to be any more boring than it is right now, and it's the furthest thing from boring now. We're in store for a pretty good 2024, irrespective of win loss record. It's going to be, it's going to be very, very fun. So play the hits. What does that mean? It means, and this is something that Drew Petzing starting off is going to have to figure out. He's going to have to figure out the elixir percentage wise on leaning on the run early and letting it fly early. Because we saw in week one, James Conner had a handful of touches back to back to back in the first drive. Uh, it took you know, six plus minutes, I believe, uh, on that scoring touch on, on the scoring uh, drive against Buffalo. But then in the second half, they did kind of the same thing. And then it was kind of repetitive and the defense caught up for the Bills and they didn't really have any sort of, you know, flow with, through the pass game. So it kind of, it was stagnant. And we saw that. Uh, the only reason the Cardinals were really in contention in that game was DJ Dallas brought him back from the dead when they were down eight, uh, down eight or down 11. And, um, hit that kickoff return for a touchdown. It's got to be a balance. But playing the hits is James Conner forefront of everything. And whether it's Amari DiMarcato, who's going to leapfrog Trey Benson. Trey Benson had a tough outing, 11 rushes, 10 yards last week. Uh, whoever it's going to be, that one-two punch has got to be there. Because say it with me now, if James Conner touches the ball 21, 22 times a game, He's not going to last the entire season. So they need to find somebody else to be able to carry an extra 10, 12, 15% of the touches if possible, if they're, if they're actually producing and it'll elongate James Connors healthy stretch for 2024 play the hits. Number one, run the ball, but it's gotta be nuanced in a sense that what we saw last week through the past game, you can infuse that a lot more early on. And, just keep the opposing, keep Aaron Glenn and the Denver and the Detroit Lions defense guessing. Playing the hits, James Conner, number one. Number two, giving Kyler Murray the freedom that seemingly he had a lot more of in week two than he did in week one. And again, week one, preseason game. Kyler Murray hadn't played a meaningful NFL game with playoff contention still on the table since the middle of the 2022 season. So yeah, it's going to take a little while. Kyler Murray, this is another thing. So you're infusing the run game and figure, well, you're infusing passing into the run game, meaning you're not just going to run the ball 15 times or screen pass to James Conner, whatever it is. You've got to stretch that a little bit, number one. And then number two, another thing that Drew Petzing, Jonathan Gannon, and Kyler Murray going to have to figure out is what's the sweet spot for the regimented Drew Petzing offense and Kyler Murray being him. And by Kyler Murray being him is choosing plays that allows him to have a little bit more control and then figuring out what that game is, whether it's scripted early on or whether it's coming out of the half. It's like, okay, you know, they're down 10. It's a little bit more Kyler Murray. They're up three. It's a little bit more regimented and then set up the play action and, and then find your receivers and pass catchers. But that's something that early on in the season, there's going to be a little bit more not only incentive, but urgency, like stable urgency to figure out the proper just pie chart on being reserved and letting Kyler Murray go and finding that middle ground, what percentage for each makes the best offense that the Arizona Cardinals can put out there. They got to figure that out now. And starting with Detroit, is a perfect time to show it. And hopefully that's something that, I mean, I'm sure that they've talked about it ad nauseum. A lot of it, again, obviously is going to be game flow. But finding how to not hold Kyler Murray back while also not just going the opposite side of the spectrum is paramount. Playing the hits, give Kyler Murray more control 
by, via play calling from Drew Petzing for him to be able to either check out or have that safety net uh, on running backs. We saw flanked out with James Conner and Amari DiMarcato last week on different plays and allows him just to kind of not dance the waltz, but dance in jazz where he lives. The offbeat gray area plays, that's where he thrives, but it's got to be controlled as well. And then the last one on offense is, this is more for me about Trey McBride than it is about Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay. We saw bracketed coverage, safety over the top, harnessing Marvin Harrison Jr. and keeping him from you know being able to do anything in week one. Bills run two high safeties. Everything's in front of them, nothing behind them. And Kyler Murray took what was given to him. And then in week two, it was obviously the antithesis of that. But now Trey McBride is the James Conner of the pass catchers. He's the metronome. He's the fail safe. He's the, I can run over pretty much anybody who's covering me, whether it be in the slot, whether they line him outside or whatever it is. This for me is a big, big, big Trey McBride game. Because he's the safest target. Not to say that nobody, it's not about pass catching ability or anything like that. Trey McBride, can run seven yards, turn around, 6'4", 250, catch the ball, and muster to a first down. He can also release up the seam and catch a 35-yard touchdown pass on the fly. I just think that when you're trying to beat a team that is more developed than the Arizona Cardinals, you've got to play to your absolute strengths, play the hits, whatever cliche you want to use. James Conner, Trey McBride. And you're going to obviously have Marvin Harrison Jr. as an integral part of the game plan as well. Like I don't even know why I said that sentence. But it's he's not a play-the-hits guy yet. We've seen two polar opposites. We've seen, oh, my God, yes, and oh, my God, where are you? This is his third game as an NFL rookie. And I temper your expectations on him not going four for 130 and two touchdowns in one quarter every week. Now – Finding him, getting him involved, paramount. But playing the hits for the sake of not beating yourself if you're the Arizona Cardinals. Run the ball, Trey McBride, and then on the defensive side of the ball, playing the hits is not making boneheaded decisions that give up the big play. The Cardinals haven't given up massive big plays that have resulted in touchdowns. Like in week one, there were a bunch of third and 10 plus that the Cardinals couldn't get off the field with. Okay. One of them ended up being, I think it was third and 14 and then fourth and five. And then uh, 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 the, um, and then Josh Allen ended up running for a first down, but with guys like Jameer Gibbs and Jamison Williams coming at both, you know, out of obviously out of the backfield and, and, and line up wide, they are an 80 yard touchdown pass or run waiting to happen. The Arizona Cardinals must, as I transition into pass to victory, next. This is a play the hits in a sense of don't beat yourself. And they haven't yet. The Cardinals haven't yet. Aside from a couple penalties on one drive, there was a lot of makeup stuff, in my opinion, from refs in, in, in Buffalo. And I'm not – you know that if I – if you've listened to me for 10 minutes, you know that blaming refs, I think, is a – it's a weak loser mentality, in my opinion. That's just what happened. The Cardinals haven't really beaten themselves this year. Week one, there were a couple bad penalties. Um, but it didn't cost them the game. It didn't put the game out of reach. They were in contention. They were fighting against themselves. It was very rusty. It was week one. They played a flawless game in week two. They cannot beat themselves. They cannot give up the big play. Stopping Jamison Williams and Jameer Gibbs while letting Amon Ross St. Brown kind of do his thing. Sounds scary. I'll explain what I mean. Locked on Cardinals. Your team every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. So Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app. Over 5 million users. I mean, that's insane. It's the easiest and most exciting way to make some cheese. Um, you can pick more or less. 
on two to six stat player projections, player stat projections. And you can win up to 100 times your cheese, man, with just four picks. Like, oh, well, and one thing, Caleb Williams, passing yards, gets you one win on prize picks every week in September. So this is, I think there's two more. Only one yard will get you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of, you know, we don't miss. It's, I mean, prize picks hook you up sometimes, man. It's the best way to get action on sports in most states, including California, Texas, and Georgia. Um, quick and easy withdrawals is a, is a big thing. They take Apple Pay. Super easy. Uh, download the Price Picks app today and use code Locked on NFL and get fifty bucks off when you play five dollars. That's code Locked on NFL on Price Picks to get fifty bucks instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollars bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks. Run your game. Again, please go to the YouTube channel, search Locked on Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button, man. Turn notifications on. Uh, leave a review wherever you can leave reviews if you so desire. Um, this I am, I am so excited for this game because, as I mentioned and just described in the first segment, the barometer check, the barometer test on where this team is through two weeks, especially after Miami got punished by the bills. I mean, before two got hurt, hopefully, you know, as quick a, rec a recovery as possible for him made the loss in the lot look not so bad. Cardinals probably should have won that game and they go in and do what they did to the, to the Rams. But you know, if they lose by 30 or 20 or 17 and the game's out of reach, the Cardinals can't get anything moving offensively. We're going to be just, it, it's going to be more of a, you know, come back down to earth situation. How can the Cardinals avoid that? The path to victory, I alluded to it in the, at the end of the last segment, you cannot give up the big play. Jamison Williams is a, you know, after a touchback, play action, Jared Goff throws the ball to the 50-yard line ahead of Jamison Williams, and he's gone for a touchdown. It's just waiting to happen. It's a dormant volcano. He's an absolute speedster that you will not be able to catch up with if he gains a step on you and the ball is thrown properly on a deep ball. He just won't. So not giving up the big play slash not beating yourselves. Um, let's focus on not giving up the big play. The Cardinals are going to have some penalties. They've got a young defense. Um, but not giving up the big play is a big thing. I mean, Jameer Gibbs, at least, you see him coming. <laughs> Jameson Williams could be gone. And, and, and that's one thing the Cardinals cannot do. Number two, win time of possession battle. They've got to be able to run the ball effectively. And you know what? If, if they can't run the ball as effectively as they'd like, because the run game hasn't been incredible. Kyler Murray has boosted these numbers. He's had over 50 yards rushing in the first two games. You would like to see less of that, in my opinion at least, to keep him healthy and to keep him behind the line of scrimmage, ideally. But time of possession doesn't mean bleed clock. Like, I'm kind of editing myself over the first couple of weeks, because this is an offense that we've never seen before. It's a defense that has far less talent. So going into the season, the best, the best defense the Cardinals have is running the ball. That's what I said. And because it milks clock, you can move the ball down the field. You can run effectively like they did last year. I'm kind of changing that to the best defense the Cardinals have is just the offense staying on the field. And I know it's like, oh, you're splitting hairs. It seems obvious. No, no, no. If you're able to run five yard outs to move the ball down the field instead of running the ball. Who cares? Like it doesn't, I just said running the ball because it's a guaranteed clock runner and it's not like you're running four corners. You're moving the ball down the field and it's allowing the defense to be in the best position to succeed. If the Cardinals can muster a pass rush from Dennis Gardak and Zayvon Collins and, you know, Chris Barnes and spots and uh, it, it, okay. I, we, we haven't, I need to see it again. Time of possession battle is massive. And it doesn't matter how they do it. These drives are going to be long and sustained. Like Drew Petzing, unless you're taking a shot for Marv and he's gone, or unless you turn the ball over, these, these Cardinals drives are two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. It's not 39 seconds, three and out anymore. Trey McBride needs to be special. Path to victory. Kyler Murray and Trey McBride need to get back to where they were the end of last year. They haven't, they haven't regressed. It's just you got to push, make that zero to one jump into 2024, 
Okay. Trey McBride needs to be the biggest asset right now for the Arizona Cardinals in the in the past uh in the past catching room. Marvin Harrison Jr., it'll come. It may be week four or week five where it's like, okay, Trey McBride is one A. Trey McBride is bona fide two, and you have Marvin Harrison Jr. running rough shot. Like Marvin Harrison Jr. is a five catches for hundred hundred yards or 110 yards and and two touchdowns again. It's like we're having different conversations. But as we see with the data that we have so far, I'm still taking Trey McBride that I trust more than Marvin Harrison Jr. And I don't think that's crazy. Trey McBride needs to be featured heavily. 10 targets, 12 targets, whatever it is. I don't care what they look like. They don't have to be 15 yards down the field. Give him the ball and get out of his way. And I think that that is going to be a massive path to victory for the Cardinals. And then, you know, finally for me, and this will be a common theme. We can be very existential about this. Please leave me in your comments what you think the percentage should be of regimented Drew Petzing offense to Kyler Murray being Kyler Murray. And what I mean isn't because it's like, well, you know, Kyler, Kyler, quote unquote, Kyler Murray being Kyler Murray is when a play doesn't work. You can't live like that. Agreed. That's not what I'm talking about necessarily. What I'm talking about is giving Kyler Murray play calls that will allow him, whether it be moving the pocket on a, you know, on on, on a bootleg, on a rollout. He loves rolling out to his left and then throwing the fadeaway. Like it's not throwing across his body. It's not throwing across the field. He loves rolling out to the left. Like he loves, he can throw on the run and equally or as better as he can when he plants his feet. So the play calling, whether you're moving the pocket or whatever it is, that's the stuff that you want to infuse instead of just run, run, play action, or five-step, seven-step drop, throw. Like, it's it's fluid. It's more jazz. It's more, you know, motion than just, you know, dancing the waltz, where it's very boxy and it's just this is what it's going to be. You've got to find that middle ground. Let Kyler Murray eat by the plays that are called infused earlier into the game than just the very reserved start that we saw in Buffalo, obviously less in, um, in, in uh, against the Rams, but it was still, they started that first drive. It was, it was run, it was run, it was run. And then, you know, the, the dime that Kyler Murray dropped and then, you know, the play action where, Marv got loose and then the game was over. Like that, that was pretty much it. So the game script kind of didn't really matter at that point. Boxy versus motion, put them together. And that's, that's the secret to elevating this offense, maybe to heights that we haven't even seen yet. Not by points scored, but by efficiency, by striking fear and opposing defensive coordinators and head coaches. Like how do you scheme for these guys? That's the thing that we're going to find out on Sunday if the Cardinals are able to do it again with a team that made the NFC Championship game, with the team is a year ahead of them in roster construction. And the one thing I will say about Amon Ra um, that I, I didn't want to uh, tease and, and not and not say it is, doesn't matter how many catches he has. He's, he's Cooper Cup. Okay? He's not the fastest guy. If he's going to be your elite possession receiver, and that's not a knock on him, he can do much more than that. But he's going to get his targets. He's going to get his catches. If you can keep him also from breaking the big one, that's a win. The chance of him breaking a big one, it's like Jamison Williams to Amon Ross St. Brown is uh, Jameer Gibbs to uh, David Montgomery. David Montgomery, stable, run between the tackles. Amon Ra between the between the tackle boxes, and he's going to get his targets. But the home run threat is what I'm more worried about than the guys, the possession guys, who are all also equally as talented, just in very different ways. You've got to pick your poison here when it comes to the Cardinals and the defense is currently constructed. And I think keeping everything in front of you and maybe giving up more first downs than you like is much better than getting burned on a 75-yard touchdown pass that could put the game out of reach. Lockdown Cardinals, your team every day. Enjoy the game. Uh, It's going to be a fun one. Remember, without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you on Monday.